I've already taken a look at the Fujitsu Quaderno 3rd generation e-reader and how it handles PDF reading. But what's the annotation experience like? Again, I'm happy to say it's actually pretty good. Diving right in, you have the same pen menu in both PDF documents and in your notes. This consists of three different pen types, two of which are pressure sensitive. You also have the marker tool, which essentially acts like a highlighter for non-text elements on the page. You also have the text highlighter tool, which unsurprisingly, highlights any text on the page. With this tool, you have the option of highlighting over text multiple times to make the color appear more prominently. There are also three different color preset options for convenience, but you can choose each of these from a broader pool of eight colors. Also on offer are three different line thickness presets, each of these allowing a choice from a scale of five different line thicknesses overall. For non-pressure sensitive pens, these line thicknesses will be absolute, but for pressure sensitive options, these seem more like a maximum or a minimum cap on possible line thicknesses that you can achieve with the stylus. Additionally, there's an eraser tool to erase your lines with varying thicknesses to choose from. Interesting to note, that choosing a particular eraser thickness here will also assign that same eraser thickness level to the eraser button on the pen. So just keep that in mind. Lastly, you have the option to move the pen menu itself around to any side of the page, which is a nice and thoughtful touch. In case you're wondering, you can write while zoomed in on both notes and PDFs and the text and annotation retain their actual resolution. This is convenient, as it can allow some pretty fine-scale annotation on your PDFs or notes, allowing you to potentially fit in more information on the page. Between the 2000% maximum zoom available and the line thickness options on offer, you can make some pretty small notes on this device. The Fujitsu Quaderno Gen 3 features a pretty interesting aspect to an otherwise plain-looking stylus. The different buttons on the stylus are mappable to perform different functions. That means that you can have the stylus nib, side button, and eraser button, or tail switch as it's labeled here, do three entirely different tasks, or set both mappable buttons to perform the same task if you want. That customizability really does add another layer of usefulness to the device. Just think, let's say you were annotating a PDF document and wanted to have a quick way to shift between different colored ballpoint pens. With this ability, you can do that. While this is a really neat ability, I've found you do need to experiment with the settings first to kind of get the hang of it. For example, setting both the mappable side and tail switch buttons to be ballpoint pen color 2 and ballpoint pen color 3 respectively will tie directly into how you have the three preset colors arranged on your pen menu. So let's say you have black, light blue, and red as your three selected preset colors. This means that to get the full use of the three colors from the stylus, you'll have to first select the first of these three colors with the tip of your stylus. That way, the stylus will create a black line by default, pressing down on the side button while writing will create a light blue line, and pushing down on the page with the eraser button or tail switch would create a red line. 
Personally, I think my favorite configuration is to just leave the tail switch as an eraser and set the side button to activate either the zoom area feature or the select area lasso tool. I think either of these adds a really powerful productivity ability to working with the stylus. Holy segue, Batman! That's a great way to transition to actually talking about both of those features. You can access these in the main page menu by tapping the small downward facing arrow in the top left hand corner of the screen. The select zoom area is essentially a quick way to zoom in on a particular area of the page without pinching the screen. It also, in my experience, works much more reliably than that other method. That's one reason it's really cool to be able to assign this function to the stylus button. Nicely, like the normal pinch to zoom mode, there is a one touch quick zoom exit button to return you to a normal page view. The select area lasso tool works very much like the lasso tools on other e-ink devices and allows you to select lines, shapes, or text you've written on the page and either just move them around or copy and paste them. Nicely, you can copy and paste notes from PDF documents to notes and vice versa. This works pretty simply. Just tap the select area icon, circle the text or lines you want to select, and then if you want to move them around the page, just use the stylus to move the selected items where you want. But if you want to copy, cut, or paste these, you have to select that from the menu that comes up. Selecting either option will create a small clipboard icon at the top right hand corner of the page, right beside the undo arrow. So to paste these, just navigate to the page or PDF document where you want to paste them, and then tap the clipboard. Tapping anywhere on the page with the stylus will then paste the items you selected. This feature works fairly well and is decently fast too. However, it's quite basic compared to the lasso selection tools on Amazon's Kindle Scribe, the Remarkable devices, or even Kobo e-readers. The lack of a resize option to shrink and expand selected text is sorely missing here. However, at least on the Fujitsu Quaderno Gen 3, the option to paste selected items is actually fairly easy to find here. Unlike some other implementations I could mention, Kobo, I'm looking your way right now. A nice time saver is the erase all annotations on page feature. As you might expect, Tapping this erases all annotations made on the page without you having to erase them by hand with the stylus. I also appreciate another neat feature on the device, carried over from the Sony DPT RP1 that preceded it, is the search mark feature. The device gives you a choice of two different symbols that you can choose to mark certain pages or pull documents with. Then you can come to the search option to search for pages within that document that have this mark. Not only does the device find the pages with these marks quite well, when you tap on these results and are sent to that page, the annotations themselves are highlighted so that they're easier to find. As with the original, this feature works really well and is an interesting way of adding a kind of personalized bookmark functionality to the device. This also works at the document level. If you go to the main document list, you can select this feature from the search icon option located there. Unfortunately, this document level search only seems to find the documents that have these marks in them, but tapping on these results don't seem to take you directly to the pages that have these marks but you could always run the search mark feature again once you're in that document to go directly to these different pages. If you're looking to keep track of any annotations on your document, you can always tap the three dot menu in the main page menu and select annotation list. This causes the device to search and display all pages within your document with any markings on them. A very handy and quick way to get a thumbnail view of any of these annotated pages in your document. This list also has a dedicated highlights tab, which displays the text you've highlighted along with the date they were made on and even what page these were made on. Pretty well thought out. 
tapping these jumps you directly to that highlight and the device also highlights the highlight in a different color so it's easier to see on the page. I've already covered the two page spread, display documents side by side, and create new side note reading options in my PDF overview of the device. So click this card at the top of your screen to see that video if you want to know more. However, there are a few more points to cover. Firstly, when you're in any of those dual screen modes, any annotations you make will abruptly stop at the line delineating the two pages. This is also the case with erasure marks as well. Impressively, the stylus will immediately start writing on either page without having to tap any of those pages first. The device seems smart enough to sense which page you're actually trying to write on, which is definitely appreciated and speeds up working on it considerably. And in another impressive display, if you're viewing two different documents side by side or with a side note open, the device seems to remember whatever the last pen color, line thickness, and pen type you selected on either document being displayed. That's pretty cool. In case you're wondering, yes, you can indeed select annotations from a document open on one side of the screen and then paste them to the other side. It's definitely a nice ability to have and, again, pretty cool. I've already discussed writing feel in my first look video on this device, and my impressions on that haven't really changed. Writing on the Fujitsu Quaderno Gen 3 is among the most paper-like and natural writing experiences you'll find out there on an e-ink device at the moment. The Remarkable 2 is definitely a strong competitor for feel, and it probably has the advantage in terms of pen latency. But the comparative softness of the plastic screen of the Fujitsu along with its great combination of stylus nib, screen texture, and writing sound, do give it a slight aesthetic edge in some ways. However, be advised that the very textured feeling of writing on the Fujitsu Quaderno does also mean that you're likely to wear down nibs for the stylus at a faster rate. Uh, here's one I made earlier. As I mentioned in my first look video on this device, you do get three extra nibs and a nib remover tool in the box. Although depending on how often you would write on this device, that may not last you too long. So I tested out whether the Fujitsu stylus is compatible with the nibs for the Remarkable 2. And the good news is, works. yes, they are. So if you happen to like sourcing your stylus nibs from Remarkable, uh, overpriced as I find them to be, you're in luck. Pen latency occupies a bit of a middle ground. I find it to be generally fine, but if you're only used to pen latency times on newer devices, like the Kindle Scribe, Remarkable Paper Pro, or even the Remarkable 2, you may find this performance to be a bit slower than you're used to. Although, importantly, this has usually not been enough to throw off my writing on the device. The one exception to this is that every once in a while, at least on my device, the device seems to pause all pen input entirely and will take a moment to catch up. Not really sure why. So overall, I would say that pen latency for writing is probably fine for most people most of the time. Once you've connected your Fujitsu Quaderno Gen 3 to the computer, you can simply click and drag the document from the Quaderno companion app to your desktop and the file, annotations and all, should appear there. On Mac, the exports displayed excellent fidelity and were a near exact match for the annotations I made on the screen, with the enhanced vividness of colors being the main noticeable difference. I was able to move these annotations around, but wasn't able to change their size in any way. Oh, uh, on a side note, if you did want to use the black color for the text highlighting tool, just know that on export, this seems to visually obscure that part of the document. So, bureaucrats of the world, rejoice, I guess. 
On a Windows computer, the story was a bit different. Just opening the PDF, again, displayed all annotations with excellent fidelity to annotations made on the device. However, when I tried to move these annotations, the lines seemed to lose all record of pressure sensitivity, and the lines became a fixed width throughout their length, and, oddly, seemed to feature several new spikes in the line. So if you need to move these annotations around on a Windows machine after the fact, this isn't great. Despite that aforementioned weirdness, I was, interestingly, able to resize these annotations here. Something else I noticed is that areas where I overlaid the text highlighter several times did oddly seem to export better on Windows. You can see the gradation and shading better. You might also note that the text highlighted with the black color is perfectly readable on this Windows PC, so kind of an odd difference between PC and Mac there. Lastly, I want to cover one element that might appeal to teachers or lecturers. You can access this if you connect your Fujitsu Quaderno Gen 3 to your computer and then click on the button within the companion app labeled Screen Capture. It's a bit misleading, because while it does allow you to take screen captures of your device's screen, it also allows you to see a live view of your screen. That means that by hooking up your computer to projector, you can share a live view of the device's screen as well as any annotations you make on it. While this live view mode isn't nearly as fast as similar modes on other e-readers, like the excellent screen share function on the Remarkable 2, it's still cool to have it here in some form, and could be useful for presentations. From working in every split-screen mode, to annotating PDFs, zooming in, or even the memorization mode, you can screen share nearly all on-device functions, and generally it's not too bad an experience. Just so that you know, all of the tests you're seeing on screen now were done while I had the device physically connected to a Mac computer via the device's own USB A to C charging cable. And as you can see, while results weren't exactly instantaneously registered on screen, the lag wasn't that bad in my opinion. The one area where the device's app really did lag behind was any time I used the thumbnail page jump mode. Whenever I tapped a page I wanted to jump to, the live screen on the companion app took quite a long time to catch up to the device. I don't really know why that is. However, aside from that, I was actually kind of impressed at how quickly most things showed up on screen, so I think there could be a pretty decent case to be made for using the Fujitsu Quaderno Gen 3 as a presentation or teaching aid. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, how about give it a digital like? And subscribe for more intelligent videos like this one.